Welcome to another beautiful day in Taiwan today. We are in Tainan today, and specifically we decided to start our video in the historic district of Anping. In fact, if you're familiar at all with this area, you might already know where we are. <laughs> That's your hint, the giant banyan tree behind us. We are at the tree house. This is not like the tree houses that you see in the United States where it's like a fort that's built for the kids. No, this place is far more interesting. While we're in Anping today, we're going to be exploring some of the area's most popular attractions and also enjoying a lot of the food that we have read about and are super excited to try. That's delicious. Oh, wow. <laughs> I know we've been trying a lot of food while we've been here in Taiwan, but it's so amazing. We can't help but share it with you. Oh. Actually, I wish I really could share it with you. It's delicious. Now, Anping's treehouse actually started as a merchant warehouse. We are in an area that actually used to store dry goods. So here are the walls behind me. But over time, it fell into disrepair. When I say over time, I mean like over the course of hundreds and hundreds of years, banyan trees have taken over the warehouse. There's a window in there somewhere. And it's created this beautiful like art installation. I can imagine that at some point, the city of Tainan had to decide do we keep the warehouse or do we tear it down? Well, they decided to keep it and they reinforced it with steel beams everywhere so the banyan trees can continue to keep growing. It's absolutely beautiful and an incredibly popular attraction here in the historic area of Anpei. I barely had to duck. Banyan trees are so cool. The way that their roots go everywhere and their branches go everywhere. Plus, I know somebody who got engaged under a banyan tree. Oh, I almost forgot. No, you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Better not have. <laughs> a long, long time ago, yes. In a galaxy far, far away. <laughs> There's also a museum as part of this whole treehouse experience. It talks about the history of Taiwan. So if you're not familiar with that, that's a good place to start. But really the main attraction here at the treehouse is of course the treehouse. We're on our way to the second site and we stumbled across like a market in the middle of the street. The streets are closed off, it's Sunday or it's a holiday. But now we're hungry. So we might have to make a quick pit stop before our next stop. This is packed, it's really hopping. Our first snack has cilantro in the middle, and cilantro's a winner with us. It somehow involves peanut brittle. Mm. This is basically crunched peanuts with honey that has been warmed so that it's flexible and can be rolled around cilantro. I never would have thought of putting those two together. They're absolutely delicious. Plus it has a bit of heft to it. So this is a really filling snack at 24 Taiwan dollars. I would definitely recommend it. Thank you. 
you soon. All right, so we have two <laughs> fried oyster dishes that we're gonna try. We have some deep fried oysters that are sort of like a spring roll, except with oysters. And then we have a deep fried oyster omelet, which sounds amazing. And we accidentally squirted wasabi on it. So this is gonna be fun. So first we're gonna try the fried oysters. Oh, I just really put one in wasabi. Oh, that's gonna be Bill's. All right, deep fried oysters. <laughs> That is very much like a deep fried spring roll, except it has the typical oyster flavor. So a little bit briny in the center and the texture on the inside is very mushy compared to the outside, which is crispy. I'm not saying that in a bad way. It's actually a really nice compliment to the outside, which is so crispy. And I think I got a little bit of wasabi. <laughs> it was really good. I've never had deep fried oysters before. It's pretty delicious. The other dish that we got here is an oyster omelet which we had not planned on getting, but so many people got them in the checkout that we had to try one too. Oh, it's falling apart. Normally at home, omelets are made of predominantly eggs, like 95% eggs, and then you add in all the other things. This omelet is not at all like an American omelet. It's more like some rice paper or rice flour and a little bit of egg and then a bunch of vegetables and I did not have any oyster in that first bite but I'm sure it's in there and the red sauce is a very savory sauce with just a hint of sweet and it's delicious on the rest of everything. I've never had an omelet like this but I love it. That was delicious. That place is not rated super well on Google but there was a personal recommendation from a blog that we've been using. We're gonna link down below because the blog has been so helpful for planning our time in Taiwan. The best part about it is that it's not far at all from our next stop, because we're already here at a temple. Okay, spin, spin. All right. This is where we're headed to next. We'll tell you all about it. This temple is dedicated to the deity Mazu, and there are temples all over Taiwan that are dedicated to this deity, but this is the largest, and it's really convenient if you're in the area. so incredibly grateful that there are water dispensers all over Taiwan. We're here on April 2nd and I think we're maybe here during a holiday or a festival of some kind. There are all these like booths set up selling food or playing games that are behind us. If you know what was going on when we were here, could you please let us know down in the comments because we're wondering. It seems like it's even busier than normal. Thanks! <laughs> Is walk you get really hungry so we couldn't resist it's bill's turn to try it's some kind of fried doughy thing with some sugar on it it's got to be great fried and sugar i have no earthly idea what that is is it sweet potato nope so i have no idea what this is it's really good it's almost like a custard consistency in the middle what? but i think it's made of rice but somehow it's a, a yellowy orange color it's just a nice sweet fried flavor. Here you go, Heather. You can try. Custard in the center? That's not what I was expecting. It's not. <laughs> no? Pretty fried no. Yeah. You know what this is? It's delicious. This is delicious and it was only $25 NT. Fantastic. 
Well, the temple was really cool. <laughs> it is so busy here. We expect it to be busy. We did not expect it to be this busy. It's so much fun, but it's also kind of hard to see the sights that we wanted to come to because it's so amazing here. Ah! Uh, <laughs> look at all the people, all the booths. All these kids are playing games. It's just so much fun. anyone who's wondering, we've talked a lot about the stairs that we've done so far in Taiwan. In the last three days alone, we have walked up to the observation deck of Taipei 101, not once, but twice. That is a lot of stairs. For over 200 years, Tainan, and specifically Anping, was the capital of Taiwan. This made sense because so much trade passed through this city. I can't believe that it stood for 200 years as the seat of the government. And even this fort was the very spot that all of the major trade relations took place. That's really neat that we can still visit it today. And we can see the cannon. That's behind me. Really, this is just such a beautiful spot overlooking the town. I love it. that you can go up is actually more modern than the rest of this area. It was built at the end of the Second World War and then modified in the mid-1970s, but we still recommend going up it because the view over the city is fantastic. wall behind me is the only original wall still standing from the Dutch period in the 17th century. It's held together with syrup, seashells, and something else. Rice. <laughs> Rice. This is held up for, what, 400 years. How's that possible? It really is amazing engineering. what's going on but it's packed <laughs> you just kind of merge with the sea of people and just keep moving unless you manage to stop somewhere so here's our next item on the food tour this is Anping Fort Coffin Toast so there's a bunch of vegetables and a creamy sauce Seafood is involved somehow. We think. And that's in a kind of a little shell. And it looks really good. And it looks like a coffin. Looks like a coffin. I hope it tastes better than a coffin. How's a coffin taste? What? That's delicious. So the outside is fried, almost like a French toast. And it's just a little bit soft on the inside and then super creamy. I'm not dripping or anything. It's so amazingly, it's holding together. It's just really tasty. I Does think it taste like seafood? Not really, no. No, it doesn't. <laughs> At least not to my, not to my taste. 
doesn't that is deep fried. That does not taste how I expected it to. It tastes like cheese in the center, but it's not cheese. No. That is so unusual. What an interesting street food. <laughs> No candy. Oh. Wow. This is the sweetest mangoes mango I've ever had. They add sugar to it back in the States. This does not need sugar. It's delicious. That is very good. What is it? Oh. <laughs> oh. I love it. It's a little bit sour but still mango it tastes like candy but it's not oh my gosh it's it's so good oh my gosh oh i love that one it makes my mouth happy it's like the sour patch kids version of mango we just stopped at this shop to try some of their dried fruits and we tried two different kinds of mango and something else that I think sounded like pomelo. And they were amazing. Yeah, we need one of those. And yes, we did absolutely buy some. It was delicious. What a treat. Their dried fruits were delicious. They have some that are sugared and some that aren't. And honestly, it doesn't need it. Absolutely delicious. Come here for some dried fruit. The next thing we're trying is called an ox tongue cookie. I've been assured that no animals were harmed in the making of this cookie. I guess it kind of looks like a, an ox's tongue. I think that's the idea. It smells very buttery. Amazing. This tastes like a kind of a lightly sugared sugar cookie like we would have at home. It would be just a sugar cookie. Flour, butter, and sugar. It's pretty good. I just want to add, it also has vanilla. A lot of vanilla. And it also has kind of a doughy texture more than a sugar cookie texture. It tastes like a sugar cookie, but like a flattened bread dough with a lot of vanilla. I really like it. It's good. It's very good. Well, this was a lot of fun. We are pretty full. We're pretty tired from so many people. But it really added to the atmosphere of the place. Thanks very much for watching. If you like what we're doing here, please hit the subscribe button. Otherwise, we'll see you in the next video. See you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.